His paintings convey the history of the residential school experience in Canada. I went to uh, Gordon's residential school, um, I believe it was in 1966, and I spent eight years there, eight and a half years of my life. Artist Ken Lonechild was asked to make the paintings for the Heritage and Interpretive Centre on the Atakaku Cree Nation. Painting the stories of his childhood and others on canvas was an emotional task. It was dredging up a whole lot of uh, memories that I thought I had put to rest. So in terms of uh, being difficult, it was very difficult for me, but the actual painting itself wasn't. After seeing the images, no captions or interpretation is needed. Sealing them into a painting where they're, it's, they're just memories now. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission encouraged the construction of the Heritage and Interpretive Centre on the Atakaku Cree Nation. The centre will educate youth about what their parents and grandparents went through and honour the history of those who have passed on. Well, it's all geared towards the people, like in memory of the people who have passed on that have attended uh, the IRS program. Like, it had the effects of it on our children now. So what we're trying to do is educate the, the youth so that they're aware how it affected their parents. Today, the Aboriginal community is still dealing with the social problems created by removing children from their homes. Some former students suffer trauma or abuse while at residential school. Frida Henneke runs the Cree Nation's treatment haven. Henneke says the scars left behind from residential schools have contributed to addictions. Drug and alcohol abuse remains high in the Aboriginal community. When people were in residential schools, they're, they're pretty... Uh, closed in, they don't show any affection to their kids, they don't tell them positive things, it's all criticism and it affects children. Eh? So whatever you went through in residential school, you pass it down to your, the next generation and it keeps on going until the parents or the siblings deal with it. The Cree Nation's treatment haven is the only on-reserve center with a methadone distribution program. It helps people withdraw from opiates. The center is currently seeking accreditation from Health Canada to run a detox center at the site. And what we're trying to do here is to, to help them uh, get a better life out there where they don't have to be dependent on methadone, you know, for the rest of their lives. That's not what it's meant to be. It's only supposed to help for a short time. Audrey Badger was a client at the centre more than 20 years ago. Alcohol, drug, lifestyle, uh, single parent, um, on social assistance, leaving my kids, neglecting my kids, abandoning my kids, all that kind of stuff. Um, all the fights, uh, attempted suicides, that was my life. She's now a counsellor at the treatment haven. Residential schools contributed to problems in her family and some of the clients she sees at the centre. And some others are understanding it, but the effects of it, there's a lot of uh, people in here with unresolved, unresolved issues from that, uh, transgenerational ways of, negative ways of coping, surviving, I guess. So we're learning new, new ways and then breaking a cycle. Many residential mm -hmm. schools have been torn down. The art serves as a visual representation of the past. Even though the TRC is over, we will still continue to talk about the in Indian Residential School and get the information out there, education for, for our children and our communities, you know, to support them. I would much prefer to paint, um, go on painting pictures that bring pleasure to people rather than bring back bad memories. But I understand the purpose of uh, why the TRC have these paintings. It's not, like I said before, it's, it's not only just to preserve and honor uh, those who have left us already, but to preserve them for all time. Pictures, artifacts, and success stories will be on display for the public. For Shaw, I'm Lisa Rizm.